most of us love to travel to new places, to journey to unknown locales, and to explore this amazing world around us. However, even more thrilling and rewarding than a travel to the Pacific or the Himalayas or the forests is the journey we can take within ourselves. I have heard of a Native American tribe that lived only a hundred miles from the largest body of water on this planet Earth, the Pacific Ocean, but they did not know that it existed. The reason was the presence of a huge mountain range between them and the ocean. They did not possess the spirit of adventure to scale the mountain. If they had, it would have put them in touch with the vast Pacific Ocean. However, even more thrilling and rewarding than a travel to the Pacific or the Himalayas or the forests is the journey we can take within ourselves. That inner journey puts us in touch with the tools that we can utilize to uplift our mind, intellect, to destroy our ego and scale great inner heights of heroism. If you take a look at the lives of the great saints who impacted humanity by their teachings, the philosophers who shaped human thought over the millennia, the social reformers, writers, poets and thinkers, you will discover that all of them had the habit of regularly going in solitude to nourish themselves for the great work that they were doing. Take the example of the great saint Krishna Dwaipayan Vyas. His contribution to the planet Earth is immense. Before him, the Vedas were passed down merely by oral tradition. He put them in writing and divided that body of knowledge into four parts Rig Ved, Yajur Ved, Sama Ved and Atharva Ved. That is why he got the name the Divider of the Vedas or Ved Vyas. He also wrote the great hundred thousand shloka epic the Mahabharat in which is enshrined the immortal Bhagavad Gita. Beyond that, he wrote 17 Puranas and the Brahma Sutra which is also famous as Vedant Darshan. But having written so much, he still felt dissatisfied and discontented. And he was sitting in dejection when the celestial sage Narad appeared and said, Ved Vyas, why are you so down? Ved Vyas said, I have written so much, it has not impacted the hearts of human beings the way I had hoped. Narad then instructed him to write a literature that would be full of the names, virtues, leelas, forms, abodes of the various avatars of God, the Srimad Bhagavat. So before undertaking that momentous work, Vedavyas, what did he do? 
he went into solitude and within himself he contemplated apashyat purusham purvam mayam cha yadapashrayam a consequence of his contemplation in solitude was that lord shri krishna came and gave him darshan having seen the supreme divine personality he then saw the material energy maya and the soul suffering in maya that moved him to compassion now nourished by this spiritual realization and filled with the desire for the welfare of human kind he wrote the shrimad bhagavat mahapurana in fact the creator brahma did the same thing before engaging in the work of creation he went into solitude and meditated and nourished himself and then charged with that inner power he began creating the elements of the universe i have talked about the importance of going into solitude for all of us in my latest book the power of thoughts solitude stimulates our parasympathetic system We all have heard of the body's reaction to stress. The fight or flight response increases the adrenaline in the blood, causing the heartbeat and breathing rate to rise. Solitude does the reverse. It jumpstarts our parasympathetic nervous system, also called the rest and digest system you can think of the rest and digest response as an anti adrenaline response it happens when the brain perceives absolutely no need for fight or flight it then signals the brain to conserve energy consequently the muscles ease themselves the blood pressure decreases and the heart slows down the sphincter muscles in the gastrointestinal tract rest themselves at the same time intestinal and gland activity increases so find some time for yourself to go into solitude you don't need to go to the himalayas in your daily routine you can decide that you will make some me time and what will be the benefit of it in today's world of gadgets and devices our brain is constantly stimulated by inputs from all sides these devices accompany us on our jogs the ear plugs are there in the morning walks and even in the bath tub the bluetooth speaker is blaring itself now we know like the cars like the computers and the gadgets we use at home if they are not shut down and allowed to rejuvenate they become subject to immense wear and tear likewise our brain needs some time to shut down and rejuvenate itself in this race of life we are constantly thinking ahead the brain is moving forward at fast rates and the body hardly has time to catch up when you go into solitude the brain and body they have an opportunity to sink themselves so decide upon one hour that you will spend investing in yourself
People say, Swamiji, I don't have time for it. But it's the principle of sharpening the saw. That one hour will ensure that you are more efficient for the remaining 23 hours of the day. Decide upon a place for your me time. Just like when you visit the temple, the thoughts that come to you are of divinity, devotion and faith. When you go to the marketplace, the thoughts streaming in your mind are of your needs and your requirements. Likewise, if you decide upon a place and create an environment there, after a few weeks of me time there, the moment you go into solitude there, the subconscious will create the inner hush which will be conducive for your spiritual journey within. So Sri Krishna said in the Bhagavad Gita, Vivikta Sevi Alaghvashi Arjun, do sadhana in isolation.